Dean, thanks for joining me. The global industry is seen from the eyes of a parhesiast. <laughs> All right, so what is that? What is the industry itself? And why are track records so important? Let's get started. By the way, I should mention this lecture was originally scheduled to be done in Market Fest, but by virtues of irregularities in registration, I canceled the lecture. Um, but they did send me a list of 300 attendees, so thank you for that. I have an extensive academic background, which I can tell you was useless in terms of futures trading. I bought not one, but two expensive packages that failed me almost instantly. Without naming names, I am attempting to sell this mint condition gym bag for $6,500 to recoup my registration costs. Now, there is one other person in the futures trading industry I've found that has some credentials similar to me. So we're going to do a tale of the two docs. All right. Here he is, Doc Brown. Good looking man. He has his own university. And he comes from an academy. Hubba hubba. I don't have any of that stuff. So let's take a look. I got a master's in biochemistry from Waxman Institute of Microbiology. Selman Waxman won the Nobel Prize, and Scott didn't. We both went on and got our PhDs, though. I at the medical school, he at North Carolina. The medical school was ranked 7th in the nation. His is 107. That's about the same. I then went and did a fellowship at Columbia, ranked 5th for three years, so three green checks. Scott didn't. In terms of publications, I have 116 in science, medicine, pharmacology, physics, and so on. He has one. We both went back to school. I got my MBA from BU, ranked 41st. He got his uh, master's in finance from Thunderbirds, not ranked at all. I have two checks because an MBA is two years and a master in finance is only one. And I went to law school for three years and he didn't. And I have about 50 papers in the futures industry and he has none. And I'm going back to school at WPI to get my master's in information technology. And I don't believe Scott has any plans to return to school. So, agree, disagree, let me know. So in terms of parhesias, what is that? Well, there are five essential elements. Michael Foucault put out a paper that talked about the courage of truth. Speak the truth boldly, repeatedly, out against people more powerful than you and with some risk of condemnation. The first two parhesias were Plato and Socrates. I don't equate myself to them at all, but just to let you know that that's where it originated in ancient Greece. Now in terms of punishment and condemnation, <laughs> I've been banned from publishing any of the online journals because I criticize so many rooms. I've been banned from the, the seminar and lecture services as well. And I have well over a thousand emails that just do everything possible to condemn me. And I've received lawsuits and threats of lawsuits. So this is how my treatment has been for speaking out against these rooms. Why is the futures industry so large? Let me show you why. I did my first search in 2012, 188 sites and rooms. I did searches every three to six months. 667 by December, uh, January 2015, and when I first prepared this lecture, 1158. So basically, almost a thousand rooms in four years, a room a day. This is going to translate to the most impenetrable problem at all. If you spent one day in each room, at the end of a year, you'd be a year behind. Because in the 250 days in a year that you evaluate rooms, there'd be 250 more. You will never get ahead. And by the way, now, today, there's 1182. It doesn't really matter. You have to eliminate 99 plus percent of all the rooms from consideration and get down to the three, four, five that makes sense for you. How do they grow so fast? You can get a domain name for a dollar. You can fill it up with a Wix website uh, template. It's really easy. Stuff it full of anything you want. You don't need any incorporations, permits, or so on. And basically, it translates that selling futures, goods, and services is far more lucrative, simpler, and risk-free than trading. In addition to all these new rooms that are being formed, some just morph. Alpha Wave into Fibonacci Trading Institute, PureTech into Market Dancer, 
these rooms into these rooms. So rooms go on to create themselves again and again. These new rooms are clever. They have great sophisticated selling, eye candy if you will. Here are the rooms that have animals for logos or names. Impressed, aren't you? See anyone you know? Quite a few rooms trade with gods, spirits, deities, supernatural. Fibonacci uh, Trading Institute uses God's vision and Trading Faith uses God's rhythm. Trading gods lets you be a god. Trading with gods, well, lets you trade with a god. And trade for Jesus, well, that's already figured out for you. You can trade with the Grail Boys if you want to. Or the Voodoo Kings. Or Crystal Balls, Magic Universities. Skip all that and go right to the Wizards. Or Bumo, use the Bible. Your call. You can trade with a planet, a solar system, a star. Obviously, it's delayed. <laughs> There's no track record. You can trade with warriors, no track record. And you can trade with the Zen, all ridiculous. There are about 30 or 40 fake universities. You can trade with them. They're not recognized. They're not accredited. They aren't universities. There's Doc Brown's, by the way. All these sites talk about high probability, setups, entries, targets, and stops. Not one of them's measured probability. I don't think you know what probability is, high or otherwise, but there they are. So they're clever. They look good. They are bulging with misinformation. And they're unregulated. They're outside of law, generally speaking, not completely, but generally. So that brings us to why track records are so important. Let's take a look. Most rooms don't have one. The vast majority of them don't. These are rooms that begin with A, that don't have a track record. Afraid to trade actually doesn't trade and doesn't have a track record. Awesome calls, no track record. They could be awful. A trader's road, actually that's just a dead end. He doesn't have a track record and so on. See anyone you know? Let's try B's. See anyone you know here? No track records. They claim successful, powerful, effective, and so on, but nothing. The excuses that rooms use for why they don't have track records are so funny, so ridiculous, so outrageous. I did a video call, we ain't got no stinking track record. And the funny thing is, they expect you to believe them. <laughs> don't. The most common excuse, against the law or regulations permitted. Wrong. So these rooms are in fact sales rooms. They're all vendor, no trader. They don't trade at all. And they do not want you to know that, hence all these excuses for that. And we, we buy these products and services and they fail us. They failed me. And we wind up with battered trader syndrome where we're sort of beat up and we're jauntous and we're suspicious. But there's good news. If you eliminate the 1,050 rooms that don't have a track record, you're much further ahead and PS, the vast majority of the rooms next year won't have a track record. You can eliminate them too, even before they're formed. Of the 100 or so rooms that do have a track record, here's what I find. A large number of them have what I call phantom records. These are track records posted at night from trades that are hidden by day. No thanks. Rooms have fragmentary records. Few good trades here, a few good days. They may even show you screenshots of trades or videos, but they don't show everyone. It doesn't much matter. They don't have a complete track record. Sometimes they show student records. Doesn't count either. And there's quite a few rooms that I give credit to for having a track record and they make some money, but they don't make enough. They do not average $1,000 a week at three contracts a trade. When you ask for that, you get down to 13 rooms. I call them Global Trade Titans, and they average $1,000 a week, $50,000 a year. But we're going to compare the Titans to some of these rooms as well, so we have something to compare for in terms of interroom comparisons for performance. Here's how I do a track record. 
I add up all the records to see the gross profit loss. Now, I'm, I'm only doing it for seven months because I completed this calibration at that time. So each room is sort of topped off at seven months of this year. I establish the number of trades they took, and I look at the number of contracts they used in their trading. Then I convert profit loss to three contracts a trade. If they trade one, I triple it. If they trade two contracts, I multiply it by one and a half and so on, because three contracts per trade is my universal standard. I subtract round trip costs, five hours a, a trade, $15 for the three contracts per trade. In this case, I'm going to extrapolate from seven months out to 12, and I'm going to overlay the net profit loss of 12 months on top of a $10,000 storing account to give a net percentage increase or performance. Bullseye Traders, our first one. He has a track record right here. In seven months, he made 35%. He would not confirm for me if that was one, two, or three contracts, so I can't divulge any more information. Extrapolate out to the year is 60%. So on a $10,000 account, he made $6,000. Titans, as I said to you, make 500% a year. So we're going to see if that holds up. Let's take a look. Bullseye on the left, trading futures in action for seven months of 2016. They went from 11 to 85, which is 73 gross, minus the round trip cost times the number of trades taken gets us to 46,000. I've been in the room every day, so I've calibrated all the trades myself. 46,000 over seven months is 79 for the year. 79 on a $10,000 account is 798%. You can decide which is bigger. Ox Street. If you click on January, a sub panel will open up that shows you all the trades taken in January and the profit loss per trade and the number of contracts per trade. So well done. Take the first seven months. This is what I see. Add them up. And by the way, this is at two contracts to trade. I get $3,754, which is 56 and change at three which is $9,655 extrapolated out for the year. Not bad. Look at the same time frame for TF, and by the way, notice they have several months that are losing months. You get the same data on this side. Add the two together, and you have a net of 38.99 gain for the year, which is essentially 38.9%. Let's take a look at Trend Hunter. This is a performance report from TradeStation. Net profit, 76,000. George subtracts out round trip costs. Number of trades shown here, 76,000 on 3,265 trades. At two contracts a trade, is this our three contracts a trade, 114,000 extrapolated out is 195. So in a $10,000 account, 1,996% for the year. Which one would you prefer? World Cup Advisors. For the first seven months, they made 8.79%. I can I emailed them to make sure this was the net percentage profit for the year. They confirmed, yes, it was. So that really translates to around 15% extrapolate it out for the year of 2016. View my trades has this track record. 69 points at two trades per day, one contract per trade, 150 days, extrapolate out, gets to 59.25 net, and brought out to the year is 88.87, which is 88.9% net gain. Polaris looks like this. This is a screenshot of his trade room. He's in an ES trade and in trouble, or actually he lost 162. This is what his track record looks like on the ES. The um, asterisks with the blue background, our aqua background, are trades actually taken. The other ones are just pointed out, but not taken. This is for ES. This is for oil, same thing. Asterisk trades were taken, the other ones were not. His track record for the ES for the year, I went and looked it up, 539 trades, 
total ticks, total points, total profit. Brought up to three contracts of trade is 99,000. Taking out the round trip costs is 91. Extrapolate out to the year is 172. And I'm just going to rough thumb estimate that half of the track rec the trades were profit for in the room and, and half were just identified in the room. That gets me down to 89,000 and change for the year. Same thing for oil. Number of trades, number of contracts, ticks brought up to dollars, round trip costs subtracted out, extrapolate out to the year. He trades less oil because those members in his room don't prefer it, so I'm only going to use one fourth as the actual number of trades. Gets me to 1,236% gain or 123,000 on a $10,000 account. Nice job. So for World Cup Advisor, or View My Trades, or Polaris, which would you choose? <laughs> right line trading. First seven months, these many trades. Cumulative profit, this much. He says that it is gross performance. Commissions have not been deducted. That's no problem, we'll do that. And he says there's four contracts to trade, and that's no problem, we'll convert that. Here's how we go. 17,000 on four is 12,000 on three, minus the round trip costs, extrapolate it out to the year, gives us 34.9%. Trade for greatness. This is a copy screenshot of the room showing the trades in real time. This is the track record, easy to read. I pulled it up for the first, now I had to do only March to September because the room has not been open that long. Total number of trades, total contracts, gross profit, profit at three contracts to trade, subtracting out round trip costs gives me a six month value of 71,000, doubling it for the year. So we have 14, 34%, not bad. So right line trading, trade for greatness, you choose. So why are track records so important? Most rooms don't have them. A lot of rooms post track records, but they're fragmentary, phantom, or just pure promotion. And when they do have a valid track record, the annualized net profits are very good for comparisons and allow you to make selections based on performance. Why would you not, of course? So my three calibrated needs is they post a valid track record, they net more than $50,000 a year, $1,000 a week, $200 a day, net performance, profit, in your pocket <laughs> and they show their trades in real time what does that mean well here's a screenshot of trading mission with Carlos Diaz it's a little fuzzy because it comes from overseas but you can see his trades are shown their stops and targets and amount of profit on the ongoing trade trading futures in action with Bob and Miko three trades here it's the only room, room that uses a Dom continuously Shows exactly what's happening on every trade, all the time. 100% transparency. Trade, trade for greatness, April. Here's a trade. She's concluded the gold on the left at 620. She's in an oil trade. And she has, that's it for so far. A little bit further on in the morning, 770, 470, $70. And finished for the morning. Every trade showing 100% clear transparency with a track record. <laughs> And she's issued this challenge to these other women traders, Ala at Fibonacci, Melissa at Stock Swish, Maria at Trade Order Flow, Sarah, Jeannie, or Jean, and uh, Carolyn at the Fibonacci Queen. Show your trades in real time, be truthful, transparent, and post a track record. This challenge has been up for four months, not one acceptance. But listen, if you don't want to email April, email me and tell me you're willing to go for it. Don't want to push it around. Go ahead, show your trades in real time. So the Global Trade Titans, my publications and videos are there. I have a new journal called Enlightened Futures Trading. I have my first publication, take a look at it. You find it here under Extra and Greatest. There are the 13 Titans I recommend, rooms that are truthful, transparent, and profitable. Find one, trade one, don't trade alone. I offer Phalanx trading system, both as a paper and as a video. You can review them or try them on your own. 
or if you wish you can hire me as a consultant to help you with that the titans or any other tactical strategies so as always <laughs> i ask agree disagree like don't like mad happy sad email me let me know and thanks for listening take care now bye bye